In the beginning, we see a bride calling the groom, but it goes straight to voicemail. She then calls his friends, and like before, it goes to voicemail. Finally, one friend, Phil, picks up the phone and tells her that, last night the bachelor party went out of control, and they messed up and lost the groom, Doug, and nobody knows where he has gone. Meanwhile, Tracy and Doug are scheduled to get married in the next five hours. We now see events from two days earlier. Doug invites his soon-to-be brother-in-law, Alan, to the bachelor party. Alan tells him that everything crazy that will happen in Vegas will stay there. Doug's father-in-law offers Doug to drive his car to Vegas. Doug picks up his friends Phil and Stu. In the middle of their journey, they barely escape a crash with a truck. All three arrive in Vegas in one piece. In the hotel, Alan wants the almonds. Stu tells him to put them back, because it has pressure sensors, and the hotel will build them. Phil replaces the almonds, with an object of similar weight, and gives the almonds to Alan. Stu wants to propose to his girlfriend at Doug's wedding. Phil doesn't like that, and says that she is not good for him and abuses him. They encounter something funny in the elevator. They all go to the rooftop of the hotel and start taking shots. Alan writes a letter to thank Doug and his friends for inviting him to the bachelor party. He does a blood pact to finalize their friendship. They all cheer to a night that the four of them will never forget. The next morning, we see the destruction they caused in the villa suite. Alan goes to the bathroom and sees a live tiger sitting there. He runs out and tells everyone. Stu is missing a tooth and nobody has any memory of what happened last night. Meanwhile, Doug is missing from the hotel room, and also his mattress is gone. They suddenly hear a baby crying, and find a baby in the closet. Nobody in the hotel has seen Doug since last night. All of them have fuzzy memories, after taking the shot on the roof. They all list the events they could remember from last night. Phil has a hospital tag on his wrist, meaning he went to the hospital last night. Alan is still taking the baby with him. Meanwhile, they all see Doug's mattress stuck to a statue on the rooftop. The valet at the hotel did a mismatch and gave the keys to a police car to Phil and his friends. They all go to the hospital and find out that Doug was with them when they went to the hospital last night. Phil's blood work came back and the doctor tells him that someone slipped a drug to him last night. The doctor also mentions that they were all talking about a wedding at a chapel they had just come from. They go to the chapel and find out that Stu got married to someone in that chapel last night and made a bunch of things with their pictures. Stu wants to torch the police car and the evidence of his marriage so that no one can ever find out about it. Alan tells them he is an expert in this and draws the whole plan. Suddenly, they were ambushed by a few guys with baseball bats. Phil puts his foot on the accelerator, smashes everything around them, and drives away. Meanwhile, at a motel, Stu meets his recently married wife Jade. They ask her about the events of last night. She starts breastfeeding the baby in front of all of them. She reveals that she is a stripper and an escort. Suddenly, the motel is stormed by police. In the station, the friends encounter a group of kids touring the police station. One of them took a photo of Alan, he smacks the phone away from the kid. Phil calls Doug's fiance and tells her that they have to stay another night in the hotel and will be back the next morning. Meanwhile, their handcuffs got all mixed up and they are unable to move. The police officers interrogate them about why they stole their vehicle. And the police officers are very angry about that. Phil requests the officer to work out a deal and release them. One officer points out something, and the other officer starts laughing. 